And this guy is really, really cool. He's an example of one of the horses when we talk about the three Fs, fight, flight, or freeze. Um, he's a freezer. So what he'll do is he'll freeze, 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 and then he'll explode. And so you have to remember to put some heel in, put some heel in. It's nice to have a backup. So the backup can actually watch his eyes. He talks a lot through his eyes. So Azul was the one that, that really finally kind of got to the inner being. Growing up, I wanted to be a vet, really bad. That's what I wanted to do. And um, Anna said, you don't need to. You know, you're saving horses, you're saving lives. You're really, really saving lives. And he was the one who finally made it. And at the end of that class, I believe it was a two-week course that I did that for, um, what had happened for the course and what it did for us. And, um, all I did was cry for a while because <laughs> this guy wrecked me. So uh, he really taught me to be authentic. He taught me to be in the moment. He, he, he was going to have to be really perfect with me. And then he was a buddy. And he had to communicate with me. You got to ask every time. And so everything that we have on this course, he is the epitome of that. He's basically telling you, he's showing you, you know, this is, this is the way to be. And so um, he's been kind of like, time for questions if you have any questions about this okay so that's his piece that's my piece now i'll tell you why we do this okay um, sheath cleaning um came about for me because a lot of horses were exceedingly uncomfortable and we would find all kinds of we, we would try to find um what might be wrong with them to, to, to rule out pain fear anything so that our methods would work because you can't train in pain and there's no pain in training so what we found was is that because they might have a little closure smegma which is the oil and the dead skin built up in their sheath or they have the uh a beam which is actually on the end of the penis there's like right above the urethra where they urinate from has a little hole called the urethral fossa and that fills full of a clay-like substance that can start out really small and it can get really big. And it's called the bean. And the bean, um, for some horses, just a little bitty bean can make a whole difference in how they feel. Some of them can tolerate a great big bean. But just like every one of us, everyone's a little more sensitive than others or less sensitive than others. So what we found was horses that were starting to buck, horses that were having problems striding out, horses that were having all kinds of issues that were normally very nice, pleasant horses that we would call a peach, you know, now uh, start having, hi buddy, I'm paying attention to you. Um, yeah, I am, okay, right, yes, okay, thank you. Um, sorry, I have to pay attention to him for a minute. Um, we found that just by cleaning their sheath, it fixed everything. They were no longer cranky, um, they could urinate properly, and they, um, they could hold a saddle, they could hold the rider, they could do what was asked of them. But because of the intense uh, discomfort that never went away, um, people missed the whisper because they didn't really understand what was causing the problem. So, um, just to reference Elaine, she had a case study that she had to do. She walked up to a horse and could smell it. She smelled that he was very dirty and said, when's the last time you cleaned their sheath? The lady, people were like, what? And so hey, Elaine helped facilitate that. And now, didn't the horse just turn right around pretty easily? That was the easiest case study I ever did. Yeah. So it's really nice wow. to, to be able to, to do behavior modification just by easing discomfort. So for any field that you're going to be in, if you're working with horses and the horse might um, feel uncomfortable, you can check to see if there might be a bean on your, your, your boy horses, your stallions and the geldings. Um, some horses stay very clean. You know, Excalibur probably he beans himself. Um, he's, he's, he's very nice. 
um, where other horses are a little more like pig pen, and they, they tend to catch the dirt up in there, mixes with the sebum, which is the oil down there, forms the smegma, which makes the nasty stuff that smells and can, can start to, to build the bean. So that's kind of the ins and outs, outs of what happens there, and it just it does create discomfort. I will touch on one other piece. That bean's right above the urethral fossa, so as it grows inside there, it actually pushes down on the urethra. So it takes the hoe from being round and kind of makes it flat, okay? So there was a vet in California that said it doesn't matter. The bean doesn't have a problem with that. Um, you know, they can still pee. There's enough pressure they can get it out. And my vet said, okay, great. Well, why don't you take some duct tape, wrap it around your penis, and try to pee and see how it feels, okay? Because... It really, I mean, it, it can it can be very uncomfortable. So you get the bean out. Yes, it will come out. Okay. Yes, they can still urinate. It's gonna look fanned out on the ground. It's gonna look like they're splattering everywhere, and it looks like somebody's put their thumb over a hose. It just sort of sprays instead of coming straight out like a, you know, when you turn a hose on, you just see the water come straight out of it. That's what you want. If you see it start to splatter or fan out, you've got a bean in the way. When you get the bean out, they can pee easy. If they're able to void, get rid of the urine, then they're able to get rid of all the junk in their system. Okay? If they're uncomfortable, they're not going to urinate as readily because it hurts. It's uncomfortable. Okay? So that's another reason that we do the bee bean. So it helps for lots of different things. I like to check it every six months to a year. You don't have to de bean all that time, but I just like to see how they're doing. If you don't tackle it yourself, a lot of times when people go to have their teeth done on the horses, they will be tranquilized for that, that teeth floating process with a lot of individuals. When they do that, the horse will go ahead and drop, so the penis will go ahead and fall out of the sheath, and then you can check it to see if they have a bean at that time. So if you do your teeth checkups regularly, yearly when the vet comes, that's a good time to do the deep beaning. Okay, so that's kind of the history of why we do what we do and how it can help you if you see behavior pop up. It's just another thing you can check. Pain in the back, back here, can be the bean. If you're feeling it back here, maybe you've done chiropractor, acupuncture, laser, all kinds of different things, it's not going away because transferring from here straight down is where, oh, I'm sorry, did I do that thing? I think that's why I do that. Maybe I did that too. Oops, why did that? You're okay. So pain in the back, uh, discomfort, doesn't want to walk or move out, or they might have a problem with the saddling, or they could start bucking. Things like that. From a horse that was not normally doing that before, all of a sudden presents with this problem. That's something you can look for. All good? Great. Great. So now we're going to start with the sheath cleaning process. And what I'm going to have is a bucket of sort of warm water at this point, a little towel, and some stuff we call Excalibur, which is designed to eat up the oil or dissolve the oil. Um, Oh, not Anna's horse, no. Elaine's being funny. Yes, Elaine's being funny. And because um, it cleans the sheath, you know, that Excalibur would be pulled out of a sheath. So it's kind of play on words there, Excalibur. Um, and it works pretty good, but you can also use a mild soap, any kind of a mild dishwashing soap. You just want to dilute it really well. The key to this at the end, and we'll take him over to a hose at the end here, you want to make sure you wash it out. Some horses are very, very sensitive to any kind of... Um, cleaning type stuff and so it'll actually uh, make them have a irritation to it where they can swell up and that hurts a lot for them as well so we want to, after we get done we'll make sure it's completely clean of any of the, the cleaning material that we're using so he doesn't have backfire from that. Okay. any questions at this point okay so we're just going to keep moving so what we'll do is we're going to start Im implementing all the different wonderful training things that you learn, some of your psych psychology terms. The big one for him is shaping, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a bunch of little steps to get to the point where I'm actually working with him. Okay. We did a little bit when we first came in here just because I wanted to say hello to him, and it's been a few years since, we, since I've worked with him, and I didn't want to just walk up to him and stick my hand up there and say, hey, how you doing? <laughs> so um, he's, been a, he's been a wonderful buddy. Um, over the years, we talked quite a bit. I have a picture of him on the fridge now, thanks to one of our other students. And we do have two pictures of him. And, um, he's just a really good guy, and he has a big heart. He just, he just didn't have a voice. Now he does. So that's what's nice about him. Okay, can we start? Yes? Okay. All right, we're going to 
he'll stop moving. Great, Elaine. If he'll come, all you got to do is just, just keep his head. Just let him, if he moves, let him move a little bit. That's fine. You don't have to shut him down. You don't have to have a couple of minutes. So the thing with Azul is I don't ever want to really micro. Let's turn your head this way so we can see. I don't ever want to micromanage him or make him feel like he's, he's trapped. He's always going to have a way out. And he's always going to get a voice. And if he's uncomfortable at any time, we're going to let him have some space. Oh, that's fun. Ow! That's really still fun. Okay. I'm going to do... I'm just going to start with this warm water. And I would just highly suggest that everyone wears a helmet when you do something like this. You can't always watch everything all the time. And so if he was to kick forward really fast, he could get you in the head. So, smegma, lots of it. He's exceedingly dirty today. Um, he's gonna need, I'm gonna have to work a little bit. We may not get it all today. Um, I can't get my hand up in there. Some people might choose to use gloves. I don't because I want to be able to feel what I'm touching. It just means your hands are gonna be really smelly and you're gonna have to wash them later. Very greasy, he's very dirty. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to attempt to get some of this nice wonderful green goop. I'm gonna make kind of a little bit of a make it happen. I'm gonna kind of foam it up here in my hands. Probably gonna lose a little bit. But what I want to do is rub this up inside him. side of the sheet with my fingernails. This will start to kind of eat it. And then, um, and then it will, um, it'll help. So what I like when you start to mess with this Excalibur, the only trick, the thing that I have a problem with is that it, you see it starts to kind of fall off my hands. If I don't, if I don't make this happen, I can see that, if I don't make that happen, then what happens is I go to put it up in there and it just falls out. And then you just lose all the product. So I like to make kind of this paste out of it and then I'll take my hand and kind of rub it around in there and kind of rake it off as I come out. That's going to be the hard part. <laughs> so we're going to see what he'll let me do. Right behind him. Like. 
right behind me. Like, That's it. gentle as I can. I go a little slower if I can. Try to be a little easier. And you'll see the more that I adjust, the softer he gets. So, and then he might amp again, but the goal is for us not to let him kind of leave his body and then come back into it. Because if he does, then he can really explode. He can buck. He can um, jump. We've got some other stories I can tell you about some of the things we've done with him, but not right now. But he's, he's, he's an extremely wonderful teacher because you have to you have to be in the moment, you have to be present, you have to really read your horse, read yourself. And um, I wish everybody had a chance to work with a horse like this. He's got to be to a place where you can handle it. Yeah. Next time I take a break. So I watch the foot, and as he puts the foot down, I just hold my hold my hand still while he's moving. And when he goes still, then I'll go back to work again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. Y'all can see all that fall out. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I want him to try to be still if possible. See, now I'm getting to the meat and potatoes of it all. I got through the dry stuff, and now I'm not stuck. He's really, really, really dirty. I don't think he was this dirty when we first did him. Okay, any questions while I'm taking a break? You're saying as you remain more gentle with him, he remains there with you? Yes. Rather than, okay. Yes. got to be stuck. Optimum timing here is not three to five seconds. Okay, that whole thing where you go to school. I did a lecture at Colorado State a couple of months ago, and I said, what's optimum timing? The whole class together, 40 kids said, three to five seconds. That's what they teach. I've got to be way less than a second. Because if I don't, you saw those back feet. I saw them. Okay. I just was still hanging on. It's a train wreck. He's a good horse. There's nothing wrong with him. Struck off several vets' list, barrier list, because he couldn't stand still. He gave him tranquilizer. He was a mean breed. He pushed through. He was a symptom of fear. Tall boys. Give him a minute. We took him up to Dr. Waggers, a vet here in Colorado, who does um, acupuncture and chiropractic. Then we were up there. He got his teeth in. He got acupuncture. He got chiropractic. All with very gentle sedative. Just starting to drop him. The penis is starting to come out of the sheath a little bit. Okay? 
And so that's good news. That means he feels comfortable doing that. Okay, if there's a lot of stuff in the way, he can't really drop. So this is our problem. So I did feel up in there, he's got a very small bean. So we'll work on that. After time it. Hang on. Right now, and then see 30. Okay. It makes sense that you do what you want to do with the sheet, and then you guys can do the feet somewhere else. Yeah, we're not going to do I just brought them in here. Just in case? Yeah. Got a crack on his right front. I'd like to take the pressure off of it so Suzanne can get in. Maybe we can do that. We can do that later. Let me finish this up. I spent a lot of time grounding myself with this one. I can really feel. I do this a lot everywhere we go. It's funny, the horses just start dropping for me to help them. And, uh, this guy makes you good. Because if I can do it with him, <laughs> you can pretty much do it with other, other guys pretty, pretty well. I feel, I just have to learn how to feel. Hey, buddy, I'm my right hand and my left hand. I always have an arm on him. I like to push away if I need to. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm gonna... okay. One more shot, and that may be all I can get for today. show you yeah um so the really dark black stuff mm -hmm. that's the dead skin cells okay that clay kind of thing mm -hmm. that's a bean that's part of a bean mm -hmm. so sometimes they'll get bigger and you know i've seen one as big as a walnut they're great big um but they get darker and harder because the longer they stay in there mm -hmm. but he's just he's really he's really a mess and he wants Oh, did he? 
I know I said one more time, and I usually like to hold my hold to my promise there. I just want to. Yeah. He likes to hold me to those. It's all sebum. This is just the oily stuff stuck in the inside up there. So you've seen me. I mean, I've pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled. Maybe we don't get it all day, okay? We get, we get quite with it. But I kind of want to quit getting a break. So if it's after 2.30, that means I've been working with you. Give us water. It'll be okay. It's really pretty tall. The problem is, is he never got, nobody understood the whisk forever. And so what he's having to do is you kind of get hit with the 2 by 4 now. You know, that's the yell, that's the scream. We didn't really school for it. You know, we didn't get upset. We just said, okay. Because we wanted to be extinction. Remember extinction? You know, we just want that to start going away.